We are excited for God today. We are excited for what he is about to do. You know, it says his mercies are new every day. Well, it's a new day. It's a new day. So Father God, we just invite you into this space right now, God. We are your people. This is your building. This is your church, God. And we are eager and desperate to meet you this morning. So would you just come like a flood, God? Would your presence just be tangible in this room this morning?
We just invite him in with me. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord.
Prayer team, would you come to the front? If you need agreement in prayer, if you need someone to just come alongside you, if the, if the Lord is just working on your heart right now and you feel the need to respond, don't leave this building without responding to the Lord. i 
Fullness of eternal promise Stirring in your sons and daughters Earth revealing heaven's wonders Spirit come, Spirit come What you spoke is now unfolding Your children shall behold it. Dreams awaken in this moment. Spirit come, Spirit come. Pour it out. Let your love run over. Here and now, let your glory fill. Your love run over here and now. Let your glory fill this house. Now the world awaits your presence, and this power is with. We will rise to be your witness. Spirit, come, Spirit, come. Pour it out. Let your love run over. Here and now, let 
Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Oh, my goodness, was that beautiful worship this morning? And the Lord said, while you were playing, that you were meant for this. You thought that you were going to go east. But he has you home. And he says, plant yourself and know me more. I have so much for you. I'm not done with you yet. You're going to change the face of this place. You're going to change the place of this town because, because you come to know him more. So, Lord, we just bless what you're doing on his life. We just bless Ryan right now. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would just come and you'd fill him right now. Fill him with more of you right now. I'm going to put my hand on your back. I just ask, Lord, that you'd fill him. From the top of his head to the bottom of his toes, Lord, with everything that he needs to work out this calling you put on his life. This calling to make a difference in his town. This calling to release your presence with every key that he touches. Oh, thank you, Lord, for calling him to know you more. More, Lord. More, Lord. Fill him up, Lord. Fill him, Lord. Fill him, Lord. With everything that he needs. And he says, there you go. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Hello, Mountain Life. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. The reason why I'm so excited is because Oh, this journey I've been on coming here. Two weeks ago, I woke up, and my first thought was like, oh, two weeks from day, I'm going to be standing right here at Mountain Life. And Lord, I don't know what your message is for me. I don't know what the message is that, that, you, want, that you want to give them. Lord, come. Tell me what you want, to, what you want me to give them. <laughs> and uh, you know what he did? <laughs> He's so good. <laughs> I went... <laughs> I started hearing him say, Dina, you have to tell them how much I love them. And then he started telling me how much he loved you. And when he started telling me how much he loved you, I started loving you. <laughs> so you don't even know me, but I love you guys because I felt the Father's heart, the love that he has for you. And it, he just kept saying, Dina, tell them. Tell them they're my beloved. Tell them how much I love them. How much my heart is with them. Tell them, Dina, how much I want them to know me. Tell them there's more. Oh. He just reminded me. He said to say this to you. <clears throat> he said, I know that you know him. But did you know that you could know him even more? <laughs> this is pretty much my whole notes for this sermon, by the way. <laughs> Let's pray. Let's pray right now. He's a real God. He's a living God. And we can just ask him. He's such a good, good father. Let's pray right now and let's ask him. Let's ask him that we would know him more as a result of this very time right here. Not over a lifetime. Oh, we can ask for that too. But let's ask that we might know him more right now because of what happens in the next few minutes. Father. In the name of Jesus, we ask 
that you would allow us to know you more. We ask that you would come, you would fill us. We ask that you would come and fill this room to an even greater measure than you already have. <laughs> more, Lord, we ask for more. We can't help but ask you for more, Lord, because the more we have of you, the better life is. And the more we have of you, Lord, mm, the more that we want of you. <laughs> So, Lord, right now, I just ask that you would manifest your presence. We ask together that you would manifest your presence on us, that you would manifest your presence in such a way that we would know that you are with us. I thank you, Lord, that you use every one of our senses <laughs> to talk to us, to let us know you're there. So, Lord, I pray, we pray right now, we pray right now, Lord, that you let us know you more. In every way that you speak, we invite you. We invite you to come now and speak to us, to reveal yourself to us, to make your presence known to us. We invite you, Lord. I'm just hearing him say, tell you this. The best way to know his presence is to empty yourself of yourself. <laughs> so, Lord, we partner with what you're saying. We partner right now with what you're saying, and we say, Lord, we empty ourselves. We empty ourselves of ourselves. We say, God, we surrender. We want to do and be who you want us to be. And we want to be fully and completely filled with you. We surrender to your will and your way in our life, Lord. We let go. <laughs> in Jesus' name, we ask all these things, Lord. Amen. Oh. I need to know, you need to know. I, I, I need a, I need like to come with a bumper sticker that says, ah, oh, sometimes I break out in prayer. <laughs> oh, sometimes uh, my friends, they know me well. They, they understand that sometimes I, I'll be in the middle of a sentence and all of a sudden I stop because I hear the Holy Spirit say something and I have to say, wait, I got to listen. <laughs> so if I stop, my bumper sticker also says, I stop for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh. So that morning, two weeks ago, when I said, what do you want? What do you want Mountain Life Church to hear today? <clears throat> I'm pausing because I'm listening. <laughs> he said, well... After he said how much he loved you, <laughs> then he said this. He said, they're my bride. And then I, I, suddenly all I could see was a bride. This beautiful bride. She's all dressed in white and she had this most gorgeous train that kind of came down like this and went out like this and was huge. It was way out behind her. And I was like, oh. People of Mountain Life are beautiful. The bride you have sitting here is beautiful. I was just, just like going, wow, God, wow, God. These people are beautiful. No wonder you love them so much. <laughs> and then, oh, yes, yeah, break out and giggle occasionally too. <laughs> uh, and then he goes, uh, oh, then I'm watching this bride, and the bride kind of turns to the side, and she was pregnant. I mean, really pregnant. And then I knew, he's been doing something in you guys for a long time, several months, maybe some of you several years. He's been doing something in you. 
and he's about to birth something new. He said it would have nothing to do with me. (laughs) He said, just catch the baby. (laughs) So here I am just to do that. Jesus, you're so good and you're so beautiful. We love you, Lord. Just take a minute to join me in loving on Jesus, would you? Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. How good you are. How good you are to show what you're doing here at Mountain Life. How good you are to speak over Mountain Life. How good you are, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. After I saw that picture, he said to tell you this. <clears throat> he said this, I will manifest myself to them. I will make myself known to them. <laughs> How many of you experience God manifesting himself to you? To those he has, he wants to do it more. And to those he hasn't, let me tell you, he wants to manifest himself to you. What's this word manifest mean? It means he wants to show himself to you. And this is what he said to tell you. Let me read that again. I will manifest myself to them. I will make myself known to them. And then he said, he gave some directions. <laughs> he said, turn your face to the sun. And I will make myself known to you. Do we have that picture? Turn your face to the sun, and I will make myself known to you. And as the sunflower turns its face to the sun, so you just need to turn your face to me. And I will bring you great tidings of joy, and I will make myself known to you. And then he said, you've never been alone, only distracted and sometimes even disoriented from your God. I am the focus. I am your true focus, your true north in sailing through this life. As I become your central focus, all else falls away. All become side issues. Then all of your cares and your anxieties will fall off, never to return again. (laughs) For I am your hope. I am your life. All else is inconsequential. For I am your true north because I didn't know what true north meant. I looked it up. And this is what Webster's Online said. Finding true north is essential for your accurate navigation. In life's journey, we are often uncertain where we stand, where we're going, and what is the right path for us. Knowing our true north enables us to follow the right path. And then from him, he said this. Truly, the abundant life is awaiting you. The abundant life, more of him. And he, again, remember he said, I, he said to say this to you. He said, I know that you know him, but, you, but did you know that you could know him more? So then he went on to say, I know that you know him. Oh, here it is again. And did you know that you can know him more? He said to tell you, you have never, ever been alone. That's why they call me Emmanuel, which means God with us. I 
will never leave you alone. And then he brought John 14, 21 to my mind, which reads, my commandments or those who has my commandments and keeps them. He it is that loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father. I will love him and I will manifest myself to him. Beautiful. Lord, again we ask that you would manifest yourself to us right now, here today. That you would make yourself known to us. Lord, we open our eyes, we open our ears, we open all of our senses even up to experience you, Lord. And we ask that you help us to pay attention to the way you're speaking to us now. In the name of Jesus, amen. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that intro. Oh, he is good. Isn't he good? <laughs> I mean, he cracks me up what he's done with this, like, former retired businesswoman who, like, just almost, I just, I just almost struggle to, to do anything of what I used to do before he changed my life. He changed my life so radically that all I want to do is to know him more. And then the more I know about him, I just keep wanting to tell more people about it because it's so glorious. <laughs> Anybody agree with me? Oh, the goodness of God, right? Whew, yeah. Oh, check it out. <clears throat> do you see those sunflowers? The reason why they're all standing there, face in one direction, is because sunflowers turn their face to the sun every single day. So fascinating. I didn't know about that. My first year of ministry school, I got prayed over by uh, the head of the school. We actually just prayed over the whole class. It wasn't singling me out. And when he prayed, the weighty presence of God hit me. And I fell all the way to the ground. <laughs> didn't even know that could happen. <laughs> and when I hit the ground, I started to see a picture of a sunflower that was being drawn in front of my face. And then I saw a cross coming up through the sunflower. And then I saw writing start in the center of the sunflower and go off to the side. And uh, the writing said, Sunflower Ministries. And he, I knew, I, I saw it. Then I saw it border up, and I saw it, was, it looked like a little business card. He's like... I knew that's the, he was naming my ministry, Sunflower Ministries. So I used to be a retailer, though. Back in the 90s, I had, a, I had a big gift store. And there was a time period when anything I bought, anything I could get with a sunflower on it, it sold. So I bought a lot of sunflowers. <laughs> and so when he showed me that, and he said he wanted me to name it Sunflower Ministries, I said, Lord, that's kind of outdated. He said, oh, no. No, Dina. Young people are going to love it. But what I didn't know, I didn't know about sunflowers. I didn't know that the sun comes up in the morning at that time. Well, believe me, I started receiving all kinds of words from people about sunflowers. Anyway, so I started re researching it, and I found out that sunflowers, literally the head of the sunflower, follows the sun in the east all the way throughout the day, and it turns all the way to the west by the end of the day. That's why anytime you see a picture of a field of sunflowers, they're always facing the same direction because they're following the sun. And Jesus said to me, tell them to follow the face of the Son of God. He said, tell them, Dina. That's all they need to do. Put their attention and their focus on me. And everything is going to fall away. And for you guys specifically, in regards to that, remember what he said? Hmm. I, 
think something good bears repeating. Hmm. Where'd it go? More in here than I thought there was. Hmm. He said you needed to turn your face to the sun. I remember that. He said, turn your face to the sun of the living God. And I will make myself known to you. As the sunflower turns its face to the sun, so you just need to turn your face to me. And I will bring you great tidings of joy. And I will make myself known to you. Hmm. How many of you know that when Jesus was born, they said, they said he'll bring you great tidings of joy. <laughs> when I heard this from the Lord, I went, Lord, it's, I'm speaking to him in October. It's not December. <laughs> How many of you know he wants to be Emmanuel, God with you, every single day of the year? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I just believe that I, is there any way we can have the teenagers join us? I was supposed to pray a blessing over there, them. Okay, so at the end, maybe I can go pray over them. All right. So I brought this book with me. Um, it's called Encounters with God and How to Become One with the One Who Loves You. And the reason why I brought it is because after two years of doing ministry school, um, we left Florida and drove across the United States, and, I, and as we started the drive, I said, God, what do you want me to do next? And he said, now I want you to write the book. And he had told me a year prior that he wanted me to write. He wanted me to write. It was after one of the professors prayed for us, and again, I landed on the ground, and I, I said, God, what is this about? Whenever, whenever you experience the manifest physical presence of God, Please ask him what it's about. So I asked him what it was about. And he said, um, he said, I want you to write. <laughs> I literally laughed out loud because I'm not a writer. And so I am testifying to you today. This is only because of Christ in me. Christ who strengthens me. Because I have like all these journals at home that I never ever wrote in. They're empty. They're evidence of the fact I don't like to write. But he said, I want you to write. And at the time, he, he gave me uh, seven uh, groups of words. This group of words down here was the, the, the one, he, one of the one he gave me for this book. There were seven groups. And when he got done, um, I, I read them over and I thought, oh, well, maybe that's, you know, the chapters of the book. And because... Um, you know, I said, what, what do you want this book to be about? And so I assumed that was the chapters. And I read it over, and he, he said, no, those are all books. <laughs> I said, well, God, you're going to have to help me. And he said, I will. And so I would be in worship in the morning, sometimes five to seven hours every morning. And then I would just hear him say, get up and write. And the first day he said that, I was like, oh, okay, here we go. You know, writer's block's got to fall off because I'm going to want to be obedient. I want to do everything he says. And so I got up, and I opened my laptop, and I said, what do you want me to write? And he said, um, well, you can start with the title I gave you <laughs> a year ago. So I typed that in the top of my laptop. And then he said, now, um, step one, and he gave me step one. Then he said step two, and he said, said step three. And I looked at it, and I thought, well, I think I know what you mean by two, but I don't really know what you mean by one and three, so Lord, you're going to have to tell me. And he did. And so I can testify to you that God speaks and that God will work out his plans and purposes in your life. Everything he's called you to do, he'll do it. He's that big. <laughs> because now there's a book, and there's a third of book number two on the way. <laughs> so I brought this to you to share it with you. It has my testimony in the beginning of it, and then um, it has what I learned from God, what he revealed to me 
through throughout the rest of it. So it's probably the price of two almond milk lattes. So I hope it would be a blessing to you <laughs> more than the latte. All right, would everyone please turn to John 17. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How many of you know what happened in John 17? What is in John 17? Does anybody know? This is considered the high priestly prayer of Jesus. Mm. Suddenly had a flash that I'm standing in Joe, Pastor Joe's spot today. <laughs> Lord. You're going to have to help me with this one, too. <laughs> How many of you know what a blessing you have in Pastor show and Heidi? What a blessing they are. I mean, oof. The teaching, preaching gift on his life. Whew, wow. Mm. Okay, John 17. <clears throat> pausing because I'm listening. Let's go to John 17, 3. Jesus here in John 17, 3 gives us a very clear definition of what eternal life is. If you think eternal life is what you're going to get when you go to heaven, oh, got a surprise for you. Check out John 17, 3. Let's read it together. I'm reading it from the English Standard Version, so I like them all. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. What? Eternal life is not just what I'm going to get when I go to heaven? Well, folks... Read your Gospels again with that knowledge. Read your Gospels again, and every time it says eternal life, realize that's what he means. Of course it means we're all going to be with him and have everlasting life that goes on forever with him because we become one with him in spirit. But oh my goodness, you who are beloved of Jesus Christ and the Father, know this. You're going to miss a lot if you don't know that this is what eternal life means. And you can have it right here and right now. Instant. <laughs> Instant. The moment you are born again. Instantly. You will have eternal life. Which... Read it again, John 17, 3. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Whew. Okay, knowing him is going to look different for all of your lives because he's going to gift you in different ways. But let me tell you, Oh, one of the ways. Oh, I hear him saying, Dina, tell him. Let me tell you one of the ways that it looks like in my life. Oh, Lord, you're so good. Whew. One of the things that it looks like now in my life is that people come to me and they see, will you pray? <laughs> when people's bodies are broken, when people are afflicted with sickness and disease, people come to me and they say, will you pray? And I'm like, it's my greatest joy to pray. I'm like, yes, let me pray. Oh. But one day I was in Florida at my daughter's house. My daughter's a veterinarian. And her little dog got into a medicine that caused an overdose and he died. People come to me and ask me to pray. 
And as soon as that happened, the door, the back door of the house bust open and, and Kate comes running in with her little, beautiful, darling dog that I love. I mean, I love him too. I actually bought him and mine at the same time, but she took him and I got, I got the other one. And she comes in the door, she bursts in the back door and she says, mom, he has no pulse. He's gone. And she said, Mom, we pray. Oh my goodness. That's never been asked of me before. She laid that little black and white fur ball, long hair to have an ease. He's about this big, cutest little white mug. She laid him on the floor and she said, Mom, pray, please pray. Oh my goodness. I said, Jesus, you're going to have to help me with this one. This is nothing compared to what I've been asked to do before. God, come, help me. You know, I looked at her face and I knew she, this devastation could cause her to step out of her profession. And I know she's called to that profession. So it was more than just the life of the dog. So I just, I know what, I just asked the Holy Spirit, what do I do? I, he said, put your hands in the middle of his chest. So I did. I laid my hands in the middle of that dog's chest. Whoa, I could feel the lifelessness. There wasn't a breath in him. It was a weird feeling. And then I just said, Holy Spirit, come. Tell me how to pray. And I just prayed every way he said to pray. First, I heard him say, command that heart to start beating again. Then he said, command that circulatory system to come back in order in the name of Jesus Christ. And then he said, speak life over those lungs. Breathe life in the name of Jesus. Release the life of Jesus Christ over those lungs. I did that. And when I did all that, I felt the chest raise. And then it dropped again. And then I thought to myself, did I just imagine that? Like, was I just like hoping that? But I prayed it again. I prayed all the ways he said to pray. prayed it again. And then the chest rose. And it dropped again, and I knew for sure. I wasn't imagining it. Well, then I prayed again. I listened to the Holy Spirit. Any other ways you want me to pray, Lord? <laughs> and I kept praying, and each time I pray, the chest would rise, and it would drop again. And I prayed that way for about 15 minutes until toward the end, it wouldn't just be one breath, but it would be a couple of breaths. Or it might be two, three breaths. And then it would drop. And so I'd pray again. It was like heart paddles, you know, like the cardiologist puts the heart paddles on. So I'd pray again, chest would come up, and then there'd be a couple breaths, and then stop. Chest came up, two, three breaths, it stopped. Eventually, after about 15 minutes, he just started breathing on his own. <laughs> and then he opened his eyes. And then he kind of rolled over and sat up and looked around at us. <laughs> He's alive and well today. That was a few, few years ago, Jesus. <laughs> Only through Christ in me. Only. Nothing I did. The power of God in me. Oh, we were so thankful. I'm not going to lie. I sat in shock for quite a little while. <laughs> then after I got over, the, I was thanking him. And then, then after I got over the shock, I started thanking him again. <laughs> it's like, Jesus, unbelievable. Nobody will ever, ever, ever be able to tell me that there is not a God. He is alive. He is well. And he is not just for the times that the Bible was written in. He is alive and he is well today. Praise God. I know that that was just a precursor for praying over somebody, a human life. I believe that someday, maybe I'll run onto an accident, 
and that person will have expired. And I'll just follow the lead of the Lord and I'll have full confidence. Full confidence. Yeah. I've seen Jesus do a lot of beautiful, wonderful things. I've seen Jesus take away cancer. Unbelievable. I've seen Jesus take people out of pain levels that are so high they almost can't stand life anymore. It's unbelievable what God does. But he's a powerful God, and he's a good God, and he loves us. Have we seen healing every time? No, but that's not going to stop me from praying. (laughs) Here's the reason why this is even possible. Take a look at John 17. John 17, 20. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. So Jesus, Jesus right here, he knows he's about to leave this world. And he prays this prayer. And the reason why he prays this prayer, yeah, you know, it kind of reminds me of when, like, I know I'm going to be gone for a week or a couple weeks and I leave my house. I know I'm, I, I need to get somebody to water the plants and I need, I need somebody to watch the dog and I need, you know, I need, like, you know, I kind of get things tidied up, you know, I get everything done so I can, if I'm going on a vacation, I'll get all my bills paid. <laughs> I get everything done, you know, so I can be gone and just enjoy myself, right, and, and rest and trust that everything's going to be okay. That's what Jesus was doing when he prayed this prayer. He was getting ready to leave the earth, and he prayed this prayer over you and over me, not just over the disciples who were there with him, but over you and me. And the evidence is is here in the scripture. So check this out. Back to 20 again. I do not ask for these only, but only for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I am in you, that they also may be in us. So the world may believe that you have sent me. Oh, get that? Christ in you will cause others to know. Because you're probably going to demonstrate him in you. Whatever gifting he's put on your life, he's going to, depending on how much you yield yourself to him, right, he's going to demonstrate himself through you to others. All right, we're back at this again. 22, the glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one. What's the glory? Oh, he's given you a gift. Get this. He's given you a gift. You got to know what it is. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. What's the gift he's given you? The glory. The manifest presence of God comes only because of the Holy Spirit who comes to live in you and reside in you and direct you every day of your life, right? So let's go back again. The glory that you have been given, 22, the glory that you have been, sorry, the glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one. Oh my goodness, that's good news. Right? The glory, the manifest presence of God that the Father gave to Jesus is available to you. And you can have that same kind of oneness that Jesus had. No, you're not going to be Jesus. No, you can't be the same as Jesus. But you're going to have the same kind of oneness with God as a result of being filled with the Holy Spirit. So the glory that you have given me, I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them 
and you and me, that they may become what they might become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you loved me. So good. <laughs> then he goes on to say, Father, I desire that they also, whom they have whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory, so that you have given, oh, sorry, to be a better reader. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me because you love me before the foundation of the world. Yeah. How many of you get to see his glory? You see his glory when he's his manifest presence when he gives you a vision, he gives you a dream. How many of you know that the word says that in the last days I will give you visions and dreams? Yeah. Boy, I really saw his glory when that dog got raised from the dead. <laughs> I really saw his glory when I got to pray uh, over a woman. Um, I joined a, a prayer with two other pastors, and we got to pray over a woman who had Really, uh, the breast cancer was so bad, she was having to sit up in a, in a chair uh, because the pain was too bad when she laid down. The tumor was really uh, large. And, oh, I got to see his glory. It was so beautiful. We prayed for her, and the power of God hit her. She came from a, uh understanding and a denomination that she wouldn't have expected that. She fell to the ground, and she was down for about 25 minutes, out with God. <laughs> we just went across to the kitchen, started chatting, <laughs> and while we were having a nice conversation, she was experiencing the manifest presence of God. And when she opened her eyes, we went over to her, and we said, well, what happened? She goes, wow, I have never felt peace like that in my life. We thank Jesus. And she sat up. We got her up off the floor. She goes, it doesn't hurt anymore. I'm like, yes, thank you, Jesus. You took all her pain away. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and then she went to find that tumor with her hand, and she said, I can hardly feel that anymore. I'm like, wow, God. Wow, God. And the next week, she went to the cancer doctor, and he checked her out of the program. He said, I have nothing to treat you for. There's literally nothing left by the time he, she got to the doc. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Jesus, you know how much we want to be your servants. We want to be your vessels. We want to be filled with you like that, Lord. We want to be one with you. Lord, we ask that you would come right now and you would fill us with your presence in a new and a mighty way that would allow us to be your servants here on this earth and get everything done that you want to do. Lord, again, we just say, would you just take all of us out of us, fill us up with you and <laughs> fill us up, Lord. Fill us up with your presence, Lord, so we can do everything you want us to do here on this earth, so we can partner with you here on this earth and be the hands and feet of Jesus and do everything that you want. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I warned you. I break out in prayer. <laughs> All right. Let's go back here. go to 24. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. How many of you know that Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father doing? So as we pursue relationship with him, and we become closer and closer with him, he starts to show us what he's doing. And then you can just partner with him. When he shows you what he's doing, 
when he shows you he's healing cancer, all you got to do is lay hands on and say, Holy Spirit, come. It's beautiful. Okay, verse 25. Oh, righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you. And these know that you have sent me. I have made myself known to them, your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. Mm. How many of you know that Jesus is in you? That the Holy Spirit is in you? Could you raise your hand if you know that for sure? If you don't know it for sure, or if you want it, right now today, all you have to do is ask him for it. Right? It's not just for people like me. I'm just a retired businesswoman. I'm nothing special. It's only him and me. How many of you know that all you have to do is ask him to come and reside in you? In John 3, he said to Nicodemus, ah, really quick, let's go there. John 3, please. Nicodemus came to him. He was a... uh, a leader of the Pharisees. He was such a leader that he even judged the people of Israel as to whether or not they were doing what they were supposed to do. He was highly respected among the Jews. And in, Nicod- or in uh, 3, he said, Rabbi, this is 3-2, this man came to Jesus by night. He had to do it by night because he couldn't expose the fact that he didn't you know, he was coming to see Jesus because he was a Pharisee. He said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs unless you, unless that you do, unless God is with him. So this Pharisee who knew everything about the scriptures, who knew the first four books of the Bible by heart, recognized who Jesus was. And he said, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs unless you, and that you do, unless God is with him. How many of you know Jesus walked around laying hands on the sick? And all were healed. <laughs> Jesus answered him, and he said, truly, truly. Oh, by the way, when he says truly, truly, what that means is heads up. Listen, you know, it would be really interesting to read the Gospels, just go back and read everything that says truly, truly, and see what he's really, really putting emphasis on. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I'm not talking about the kingdom you get when you die, and you pass from this earth, and you get the kingdom of heaven talking about the kingdom of God that's right here and now. I'm talking about the kingdom of God that you get when you get eternal life, the knowing him. Oh, yeah. Jesus answered him, and he said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then down in verse 5, he says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, the Holy Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. There might be some of you in the room tonight that would actually like to surrender yourselves and just say, God, I can't do this life without you. I need you. Some of you, some of you 
have said, God, yes, I know. I know that Jesus Christ, he died for our sins. And I accept you, Jesus. But some of you still need to be born of the Spirit. At the time of your confession, you didn't receive what Jesus came to bring you. What he came to bring you was abundant life, eternal life. Some of you missed something really important, and you didn't say, and please come and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Would you all close your eyes just for a minute? To those of you who know you are missing something, all you have to do is pray a simple prayer. Pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know that you came from the Father. And you came here to make sure that I could be right with the Father and be in right standing with the Father, so that there would be no separation between you oh, and me. I know that you came to this earth for that purpose and for that reason. I know that. So I ask you to come right now and fill me with your Holy Spirit, with Holy Spirit. We say to you, Holy Spirit, come now and fill them. Fill them up. Fill them from the top of their heads to the bottom of their toes. Fill them, Lord. Fill them, Lord. Fill them. Ask him. Ask him. He's a good, good father. He loves to give good gifts to his children. Ask him right now that you would be filled, filled completely with him, saturated with him, so you can have a knowledge of him. And you can make a difference in your world. But even if you don't make a difference in your world, you just know him, man, and you're going to find a bliss you've never seen before. <gasps> Holy Spirit, come. Fill us. Even if we've already been filled with Holy Spirit, we ask, Holy Spirit, you would come and fill us with more. Oh, yeah, beloved, there's more. More, Lord. More, Lord. Fill them from the top of their heads to the bottom of their toes. That they might be one with you. That like Jesus, oh, we have the ability to see you see what you're doing and partner with you, Lord. If you're feeling the presence of God, would you just feel free to come forward? Honor that presence you're feeling. You want more of him? Anybody in this room want more of him? Come to the front. He's got it for you. Sometimes it takes that walk. Sometimes you have to obey what he says and walk. Sometimes you have to take a move toward God. You want more of God? You want people to <laughs> come to you and say, pray, will you pray? He's willing. He's such a good, good father. Oh, he's such a good God. Such a good God. Matthew 7, 11 says, oh, who of you, even though you're of a an evil nature because you're human. Would ever say to your child, if he asks you for bread, would you give him a stone? No. You'd never do that. And if your child asks you because he's hungry for a fish, would you give him a serpent? The word says, no. He'd never, ever give you that. The word says he's such a good, good father. Such a good, good father. 
that he'll give to all who ask. The last line of that verse is to those who ask. I'm just so thankful that right now God is moving on your heart. And all when he's moving on your heart, that means all you have to do is be ready to receive. Ask him. Your kids are in the back, and um, Dina's going to hang out and do some ministry, but if you'll go um, grab your kids, I know the teachers would really appreciate it. Thank you, Grace. All right. Y'all, let's ask him. If there's a parent standing up here and you're going to get in your kids, go get their kids too if you can. <laughs> I don't know if you can do that. But God's doing something really special right now, and we don't want to move away from that. So if you would take your hands and you would just turn them up, palms up to Jesus, palms up to the God who wants to fill you and wants to be one with you. It's, the most, it's one of the most humbling things you can do. Say, God, I surrender. I give you myself. God, I want you. I want more of you. I want you right now, God right now to come and fill me. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me with more of you. Simple prayer. Fill me. Just start praying it right now. Say, God, fill me. Close your eyes. Close your eyes because he might start using your sanctified imagination to show you a picture right now. God, fill me. Fill me with more of you. Fill me with all of you. Fill me, Lord. Fill me, Lord. Fill me, Lord. Father, I ask now to all of those who are truly hungry, all those who want to know you more, all those that want to serve you more, Lord, all those that you've called right now in this moment, I ask now, Holy Spirit, come. Fill them now, Lord. Fill them, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. There's always more of you. It's so beautiful. More, Lord. Everything that you have for them, Lord, fill them right now. Fill them, Holy Spirit. Fill them up, Lord. So that they might know that you are in them and they are in you. More, Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start at one end, and I'm going to start walking through, and I'm going to lay hands on. And um, uh, as you, some of you may need to leave, I understand. I hope you all come back tonight at 5. I hope you bring everybody who needs healing, everyone you know who's willing to take the risk and come and ask God for it. Remember, he loves you. You are his beloved. Remember that. He loves you so much. Oh. So those of you who need to go, it's okay. Or those of you who don't, stay. Pray that these who are hungry and need more, that they'd be filled with the fullness, all the fullness that Christ has for them. Thank you all. Thank you for being here. I love you. I got, I got a love for you because he loves you so much. 